So today we're going to be covering chapter 4, section 3, which is electron configurations. And the first thing you need to know is that atoms and electrons, like most of the rest of the universe, like to be in the uh, lowest energy state possible. Now, what does that mean? It means that for electrons, they like to be in the ground state as close as possible. So as you can see, this arrow indicates increasing energy going down this way. So electrons tend to be in the lower elements at least they occupy 1s first, then 2s, 2p, etc. Following these arrows which indicate higher and higher energy. So there are some rules that govern how electrons are configured in atoms and the first is something called the Aufbau Principle. And what the Aufbau Principle basically says is that electrons will first occupy the lowest energy possible. So they follow this rule right here. And you can see that again on the diagram where they start here at the low energy and then gradually increase following these red arrows. Another thing you'll notice is it tends to follow in a pattern regards the number of the orbital. So it starts with 1s and then 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, etc. But once you get uh, up above 1 and 2, it follows a strange thing where the d or suborbital is actually higher energy than the s suborbital of the next energy level. So what ends up happening is that electrons will fill up, for example, the uh, 4s orbital before they fill up the 3d. The next rule is something called the uh, Pauli exclusion principle, which is something you find in both chemistry and physics. and what the Pauli exclusion principle says is that no two electrons in the same atom can uh, have the same four quantum numbers. And basically what that means is that two electrons that are in the same orbital, for example this 1s orbital, have to have opposite spins because their other three quantum numbers are the same. So let's say one has a spin of one half. That means the other electron in that orbital has to have a spin of negative one half. And the last rule which we're covering today, which is Hund's rule, says that equal energy orbitals must each be occupied by one electron before they can be filled by two. And what this does is it minimizes electron repulsion and ensures that uh, they have a lower energy because there's not as much repulsion. And so basically what this means is if we represent these spin numbers of negative one half and a half for electrons with arrows, if you're filling up an orbital, let's say this is a p orbital, so that has three suborbitals of each, let's say it's the 2p over here, it means that you have to fill up each suborbital with one electron so if you were to go keep going you could fill these three if you were to add another electron. You'd have to fill these three before you could go back in and then fill in this one with two electrons in opposite spin states. Because having these two electrons in the same suborbital while it is allowed it's required that you do this state first which has a lower energy because these electrons will tend to repel each other. So how do we simplify this system and represent these electron configurations in like a better manner? Well, there's a few ways. The first is called uh, orbital notation, which is probably the simplest way because it involves drawing out every single electron. And in this case, orbitals are represented by lines like this and electrons are represented simply by arrows indicating their spin state with the name of the orbital below it. So let's say this is the 1s orbital and if we just put one electron in there that would be hydrogen. And then if you put a second one in there notice how I'm flipping the arrow around to obey the Pauli exclusion principle then this would become helium and then what you would do is go on to the next orbital, in, the which, in which case the next lowest energy orbital is 2s, and you'd throw another electron in there, and then it would become lithium. The second way is something known as uh, 
simply electron configuration notation. And this is a lot simpler because it just involves writing and is more representative. And basically what you would do is you use the name of the orbital but with a superscript to indicate the number of electrons in that orbital. Let me demonstrate. So for example, for hydrogen, you would write the orbital 1s1, or 1s rather, and then indicate the number of electrons, in this case just one. Helium, you would do, oh, I'm sorry, 1s and then two electrons. And for lithium, the third element, you would fill up that orbital 1s2 to obey the alpha principle and then you would move on to the next lowest orbital 2s and then the number of electrons is just one again and just for some quick terminology this 2s which is the highest energy level in lithium which has an electron in it is called the highest occupied energy level and what that means for the other electrons this is also the uh, electrons that are in this energy level, the two, are also known as valence electrons because they are the ones that end up reacting during chemical reactions. And what that means is these 1s2 electrons become what are known as inner shell electrons, which basically means they're unreactive, they're sort of hidden behind the energy level, the shell of the second orbital. Alright, so here we have what is somewhat close to a Bohr model of the atom. It's not quite accurate, but each orbital is represented, or sorry, each energy level is represented by color association. So or energy level 1 is blue and energy level 2 is red. And then the suborbitals are represented by rings. Again, this is inaccurate. The p orbitals are actually sort of dumbbell shaped things oriented around the nucleus differently. But what this gives us is a chance to see how you fill the orbitals or at least the notation corresponding to adding electrons. So let's say you had an atom of hydrogen. So you just had one electron here. You would just add the arrow there or helium. You'd again follow this to obey the Pauli exclusion principle and then if you moved on up to lithium, again, you're out of room in this lower, lowest energy level of 1s, so you have to move on up to obey the alpha principle. And then again, you fill it up here. And again, flipping the arrows to make sure the spin states are opposite so that the electrons can coexist. And then here's where it gets trickier. If you want to move on to boron, let's say, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. You have the electron, and then let's skip a few. Let's go, there's carbon, there's nitrogen, there's oxygen. All right. So then you have the arrow here, here, and then you can come back and start filling in like this. And you can continue with fluorine and neon by filling in the rest of the arrows. And these all here in the second energy level are valence electrons because these are in the reactive outer shell whereas these 1s1 are what are called inner shell electrons. And if you wanted to write this all in electron configuration notation you would put the 1s with two electrons, 2s with two electrons, and 2p with six electrons and that corresponds to neon on the periodic table. Now because neon has this full outer shell or full outer energy level rather it's the same thing with different terminology of eight electrons it follows something as which is called the octet rule which basically means that once it's filled completely this outer energy level with eight electrons it is now unreactive which is why it's in a group called the noble gases which you can see on the far right of your periodic table and while this seems like a lot of writing every time luckily there is a shorthand known as noble gas notation so for example if you wanted to write uh, the electron configuration notation for sodium which has 
an electron out here as well as the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. You'd have to write out 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. And that would take forever if you were to write it out for every element. So what you'll notice is that this part is the exact same as neon. So what you can do is take the noble gas element that precedes any element in the periodic table. Obviously you can't do this for hydrogen because it doesn't have a noble gas uh, that precedes it. Only helium is the first one and that comes after hydrogen. But what you can do is for every other element you can put that in brackets as a substitute for all this writing over here and then just add on the additional part. So the noble gas notation for sodium would be neon in parentheses with the 3s1 on the end.